Hello, and welcome to another Riftwing Designs for Zen. Today we're going to be starting our workshop, and it's going to be a series of classes using different aids to help with your yoga sessions. So for today, we're going to be doing blanket yoga, which incorporates the use of blankets. So if you notice the start here, I've got a towel, two towels, you can use beach towels, normal towels, blankets, and just set up your mat. And actually, you can use towels or blankets as mats, so it's like double bonus. <laughs> to start off with, if you've got a blanket, we are going to use the blanket in a medium setting, or you can fold it in half if you want. We're going to sit on it. So the idea of using a blanket to sit is that you fold it, and then you leave space so that your hip bones stay on the blanket. <laughs> And then you allow your feet and knees to fall forward. Can be either folded or out like this. But the idea is it lets the hips rotate down a little bit. So that's how we're going to get started. And I'll post in chat one more time. Oh, welcome, welcome. So glad to see you guys here. If you haven't got the music, it's not like anything special. If you have anything else you'd like to listen to, feel free. This is going to be a relaxing designs for Zen because again it's been a little while since I've streamed and I want to get back into yoga slowly and also blankets are kind of cozy and snuggly so we're gonna go with that so to get started find your easy seat using the blanket at whichever height you need you can fold it over more if you want to be higher or less if your hips are pretty neutral so I like mine like this it's about an inch off the ground if you haven't joined me for yoga before, Rift Wing Designs Yoga is using the Bob Ross style, which is do what works for you. Listen to your body, never do anything that's painful, and always find whatever accommodations you need in order to make yoga work for you. If you can't do the pretzels, <laughs> don't do the pretzels. There is only comp competition between you and yourself and between me and myself and so stop take a drink pause whenever you need to and let's have some fun so to get started this is blanket yoga there are many different ways that you can use blankets or towels or beach towels first off to use and replace other props which i'll be doing in future series so every saturday at this time which is noon eastern i will be providing a different series and one of those is blocks so blankets can be pretty good blocks We'll be doing blocks later though, so you gotta <laughs> tune in next time. Full schedule again is on my Facebook at Riftwing Designs. They can be used to help you keep warm. So if you have a cool body and you're laying down, you can use that as just a nice cozy way of staying warm. They can be used to cushion, especially under your knees. So even now, let's try doing this. Take if you have, and if you don't, go, go get some more blankets or towels. And if you put them underneath your knees like this, it gives your knees a little lift or maybe you want it under your ankles it's cushioning so if you have bony joints like me <laughs> or if you have any issues with your joints this is again the bra bob ross style listen to your body do you need extra cushion under your knees do you need it under your back do you need it under your wrists and we'll do some of those throughout the practice today and the last thing that you could do uh, besides gaining seats uh, height in your seat, so we've already got the one, wait, there we go, <laughs> below your seat, I feel like I'm doing Simon Says here, is that you can also use this to assist with flexibility. So again, you don't have to bend, you can just use the cushion to allow your joints to relax. This is going to be Zen relaxation yoga. So now that we're in our easy seat and you've found different ways to use your blankets or towels, just figure out where your body is. We're going to start with a breathing exercise. So just notice where your breathing is. In yoga, breathing is the most important thing that you can do. So just notice it right now. Is it shallow or strong? What's the temperature as it goes out of your nose? Or for me, like your mouth. <laughs> Where is it coming from? Your diaphragm or more in your chest? And 
And now that you've noticed your breath, start to actively breathe from your diaphragm. If you'd like, you can put your hands over your belly. The natural way of breathing when you're not stressed is to breathe in from the belly. Your belly expands. And then exhale and your belly goes inwards. And that is moving the diaphragm. So the diaphragm as you're breathing out is going. And then when you breathe in, it actually pushes in and pushes the breath out. So you're breathing in, expanding, and exhale, push it in. Now you can do the little rockabye baby thing that I'm doing if you want, or just keep your hands in your belly, or you can keep your hands in a neutral position. Just focus on breathing deeply from your diaphragm, and your eyes can be open or closed. Again, this is your yoga. Make it work for you. And now we're going to do Ujjayi or ocean breath. I invite you to try this breath with me. And if it doesn't work for you, again, just breathe and focus on that. Stay mindful of just your breathing. So for the ocean or Ujjayi breath, on an inhale, draw it in. On the exhale, force it through your throat like you're fogging a mirror. So you're going, You don't have to make the noise, but you'll hear it in the back of your throat. And you can do it with your mouth closed and make it through your nose, or you can just do it through your mouth, whatever works for you. And if you do it the correct way, it sounds like the ocean waves crashing, which is why it's called ocean breath. Now, you don't want to hyperventilate, but go at a good speed. This is meant to build warmth and to help oxygenate your blood to get us ready for our exercise. Continue breathing. For those of you that have joined us, if you have music you'd like to play, go right ahead. And if not, here's the recommended playlist. It's by somebody else, but it's nice and calming because this is going to be a slow one, Fizz. (laughs) There ain't no fast yoga happening today. All right. Start to come back to your normal breathing. And again, if you'd like to continue that ocean breath, you're welcome to. For those of you that are showing up now, we're just sitting on top of a blanket with options for additional blankets or towels underneath your knees. And if you don't have at least two or three, just grab something, anything poofy. To start off with, you're probably wondering, why do I have giant circles under my eyes? And what am I wearing? (laughs) So Rift Wing Designs is all about cosplay yoga. And today I am doing a My Hero Academia cosplay. This is Shinzo Hitoshi. And not a main character, but someone else that goes to UA, the Hero Academy, who is stoical and straightforward and has an ability to spark conversation with others, despite having a very quiet attitude most of the time. Hintoshi is shown to be rather clever and actually can manipulate others with his words, which is his quirk. It's called brainwashing or a manipulation of others. So this was perceived as evil because you're controlling others. And it really scarred him growing up. Hitoshi was feared and discriminated because of the quirk. And it led him to become angry and resentful. And he said, oh, nobody will ever understand me. I think a lot of us have gone through a phase like that where you think no one else has ever felt the way that you do. And that was one of his challenges as a side character in My Hero Academia. He wanted to be a hero. He wanted to save people and be that beacon of hope and peace. And it was difficult because of the preconceived notions, prejudice, fear against who he really was. And one of the interesting things about yoga is yoga is a way to have those conversations about race, 
and discrimination and prejudice. So never feel like you can't invite those feelings into your yoga practice. Riftwing Design stands for equality and Riftwing Design stands against white supremacy and all forms of inequality. So stand up for others and be strong. In yoga, we also set intentions. So if you'd like to set an intention here to share your abilities to help others, you can set that as your intention. If you like to set your intention to be yourself, or maybe like me, you just need to find a new beginning. That's where I'm at in my personal life. So find your intention right now. And we're gonna seal that with some breathing. So again, sitting up straight. On an inhale, raise your hands up above your head. Exhale, draw your hands to heart center. And you'd like, you can close your eyes here. We're gonna do two breaths, one normal and then a deep exhale. So breathe in, let it go. And a big inhale, exhale, and seal your intention for the class today. All right, inhale, arms up. We're gonna start with twists, exhaling to one side. And here again, if you need to move your blankets out of the way, feel free, inhale up. Exhale, other side, again, adjusting as needed. We're gonna do two more sets. Exhaling down, inhale up, and exhale down. I think we got one more, guys, let's do it. One, exhale, and inhale up. Exhale down, good, come back up. Reach both hands as high as you can, then keep your arms up and drop those shoulders down into their sockets, good. And then slowly lower your arms down through this goal post here. Maybe draw your shoulders back. Feel that stretch. Ooh, yeah. And then lower your arms. Shoulder rolls. I like to go forward, up, back, and down at your own pace. And if you get stuck somewhere, stay in that stuck position and try and roll it out. Again, this is your practice. Oh, it feels good I could do this the next hour. <laughs> and then in yoga, we like balance. So go the other direction, going forward, down, back, and up. And if you notice, your hands can be anywhere here. Let them flow with your body. Again, feel what you need during your shoulder rolls. I look like I have no shoulder whatsoever because of this awesome scarf. <laughs> oh, okay. And now we'll do neck rolls. So keeping... In neck rolls, never bring any pain. So we're gonna start just by looking down and then rolling your ear to one side, trying to touch your ear to your shoulder. And if you get caught somewhere in between the roll from the bottom to the top and it feels tight, you can have the option of placing your hand on your head and maybe reaching the opposite arm out. Or you can just use your nose and point with your nose to allow rotation to stretch. This one has been really good for me this week. I don't know what it is, but on this side, I've just got a little bit too much tightness. And these little nose rolls have been fantastic. All right, then roll your way back to center and roll to the ooh, other side. And when you find those little ooh spots, stick around and feel it out. Or again, the option to place your hand gently on your head and stretch out, finding what works for you in this neck roll, my goodness. I think we all need this yoga, huh? Again, this will be happening every Saturday now, as long as I stay healthy, knock on wood. There we go. <laughs> and once you're done, you're welcome to do full neck rolls. Again, if it's comfortable, remember to go both directions. Find that comfort and ease. This is your yoga session. And then come back to center. And we're gonna get going. So to start out with, again, you have the option, and if you wanna do this on your mat and not use blankets, do it. But for me, I like to use a blanket that's about this size. It's again, about an inch thick. You can use your towel. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with cat-cow. So I've just moved it over. My knees are on the blanket, and I like to have my feet on the mat, but if you like your feet up too, you can keep them on the, on the blanket or make it larger again. So many options here, guys. 
So for cat cow, you're going on to all fours and this blanket is now providing padding and a little bit of lift for my legs, knees and hips. So for cat cow on an exhale, you're pushing your spine up like a cat. Inhale, you're shining your chest through your arms. Think about moving your chest. Exhale, lifting and arching your back. Feel the shoulder blades sliding as you're going into your cow, shining your chest forward, pulling those shoulder blades back. Point with your nose. Focus on your breathing here. Go at your own pace. Exhaling in a cat. And inhaling in a cow. And if you'd like, you're welcome to invite movement here where you can start to swing your hips or maybe you like to look side to side. Again, this is your practice. Honestly, cat cow feels really good for me today. So I'm just going to stick with it. Do what works for you. Oh, yeah. And from here, come back to stillness in your tabletop position. Now we're going to do child's pose. So have some fun with your blanket here. Child's pose is where your knees are slightly wide or they can be together. So again, take those options. You sit back on your heels, you walk your hands out and you flatten down. So during child's pose, I'm going to give you four options. So keep your eyes up here for just a second. So first child's pose with the mat, uh, the blanket underneath you to give you that padding. Second, keep this and the towel that you roll up and you put the roll in between your knees. Now this is better when your knees are together or else you do a bigger roll. So see there's one over and one under so that when you go into child's pose, it's giving a different stretch on your hips. So you've got that option. <laughs> this is so fun. Then you can do one without this underneath. You can also do one under your head. So keeping that other one, again, you can do child's pose and rest your head down. Obviously with both arms down. Just showing you what it looks like here. Or you can also do any of those three or four combined or and or, right? <laughs> this is why I gave you a whole bunch to take. You can have another one and fold it and put it on your bum. So when you're down, it puts the pressure on your hips. So spend a few minutes just trying different ones and see if maybe using a towel or a blanket as an aid will help you. This actually feels kind of cool. We'll try it without. In child's pose, focus on having your shoulder blades back still and push those hips down. That's why they've got this little, <laughs> this little prop riding on me. It's uh, cute. And again, your knees can be wide or they can be close together. They'll give you different stretches. I feel that this one, my shoulder blade feels different when I do it with my knees together. Really fun. You could spend the next half an hour playing with these, right? That's the, the joy of this. Okay. So that's child's pose. Anytime throughout the practice, if you want to go back to this, keep doing it. And if you're watching this on free play, pause it and play around as long as you want. We're going to go from here into our leg stretches. So again, option. If you don't want this underneath, you don't have to keep the, the blanket underneath you. But to start with, I'm going to step back one leg, keep the toes down, and you're just doing a long stretch by pushing that ankle and heel back. You should be looking down so your neck is neutral. Keep those shoulder blades back and down. Focus on having that nice tabletop up front and stretching through the back. Notice how stable you can be here. Notice how it feels with the cushion underneath you. Breathing. And then switch. Exhale as you step back, planting the toes, pushing that heel back, 
Keeping your nice straight posture. Breathing into it. Option here, if you'd like to go into a plank, feel free. I guess I can try it. <laughs> so if you're in your plank, another option for the blanket that I actually learned about this morning as I was doing my last minute research is you can put your palms on the blanket and your fingers down and that gives a little bit of a different push on the wrists. Now I have pretty sensitive wrists. I can't tell if this is better or worse for me, but again, it's an aid. If it works, use it. <laughs> All right, now that we've done those stretches, Okay, we're going to do a forward fold. So when you're doing like vinyasas and things, you have the option to take it out of the way. But for this one, we're, I'm gonna do a low vinyasa. So I'm just gonna go back into a little plank here. Then I'm gonna lift through and see if I can't do like a low lunge. So for the low lunge, you're pulling one leg through the other knee is down on that that blanket see and then you shine your chest forward shoulder blades back and down looking up here option to put your hands on your knees and feel how your hips may be going forward or backward maybe scooching that foot forward or backwards or side to side just play around with how the aid helps in your low excuse me my goodness I did have a student say, wow, I get bubbly when I'm doing yoga. And that is a side effect. It does aid digestion. All right, so we're gonna go up. So plant both hands and kind of find a way to walk your foot forward into a forward fold here. In your forward fold, give yourself a nice generous bend of the knees. You can hold your hands, just doing rag doll here. Or if you like, you can keep your hands down. Great option here, guys. Guess what? You can put your hands on a, a super folded blanket if you can't reach the ground. And again, that's nothing wrong with that. It's your body. Not everybody can touch the ground. Right? All right, now let your head hang loose here. Let that neck go. <laughs> of course, my costume is falling all over me here. It's Fantastic. I know you know forward folds. Okay, inhale, halfway lift. Hands on shins. Back should be straight. Gaze should be down so you're keeping your neck neutral. There you go. And then exhale, fold. You also have an option here to put your heels on the blanket that gives you like a tippy toe kind of stretch might be easier I don't know what works for you guys or maybe you put your toes on it the only wrong way is if it causes pain so again inhale halfway lift exhale fold and then we're going to inhale and do one mountain pose so hands are coming up reaching up and then exhale draw your hands to heart center we made it to the front of our mat <laughs> and I'm not going to stay here too long. So I know I'm a little cut off, but that's okay. From here, exhale, fold one more time. And now we're going to step back with the other leg. So for me, I'm stepping back with the leg that was not facing you. And again, we're going into a low lunge here. So the other knee should be forward. And again, you have the option to see where your hands are. Maybe you wiggle your hips forward or back. Find how that low lunge speaks to you on the other side. How does a blanket help you during this lunge? What can you do to enhance the stretch for you? And breathe. And then if you'd like here, you're welcome to go through a flow where you step back, you need to do chaturanga, or I'm gonna drop my knees and go through a cobra, so I'm lowering all the way down. And actually that does not feel good, so I'm gonna put this at my chest. Then lift up your chest and hands, maybe cobra. And put your hands, 
and you can go into your down dog or your child's pose. And I'll just do one here because I like the stretch on the back of my legs. But you're welcome to find that child's pose. If you're in the down dog, keep that head and neck loose. Focus on pushing your hips back and down. Breathing here. Now there is an option in this one too. <laughs> There's always options. You can put this at your heels in down dog. Again, your heels don't ever have to touch the mat, but it's one thing to try. Just play around with it. I actually feel a much more intense stretch this way. And then it, wherever you are, find your way back up into plank and step forward into one more forward fold. This time we're going to do gorilla. So for gorilla, I'm actually going to do a little bit of a skinnier blanket and stand on it. Because in gorilla, from the forward fold, you take your hands and you put them under your feet so your palms are facing up. So you're standing on the inside of your hands and the backs of your hands are touching down. Notice my knees are bent here. But the idea is that your toes actually massage your hands and wrists if you wiggle them. And you're also stretching. And then you can try to straighten your knees maybe a little. Or maybe you try and pull your shoulders and elbows back. Keep your head loose and just play around with this. So the blanket here is serving to cushion the back of your hands. And then let it go. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, all the way up. Exhale, fold. And option for one more vinyasa here. So stepping back, you can do your chaturanga, knees, chest, chin, baby cobra, wherever you'd like. And we're going to meet back in child's pose, but feel free to do one more down dog if you want. Nice work, guys. We're halfway there. <laughs> so from here, we're going to go into some more seated poses. We're doing most of this on the ground. Like I said, I need a break. So I hope that you guys don't mind. And if you want something faster, I've got some of those coming up too. So I'm turning so you can see what I'm doing here. I'll probably rotate a couple of times. We're going to start with, of course, hero pose because this is my hero academia, right? So for hero pose, start off on your knees. And again, great cushioning here. And you sit back on your heels. Now notice, I like to keep my feet down again on that mat. Find where your ankles and heels want to be. And that's all it is, sitting up straight and tall. Hands on your shins or thighs. <laughs> Roll those shoulders back and down. And just breathe. Focus on pulling your belly in. Shoulders back and down. Maybe you find that ujjayi breath, or maybe you find a more calm breath. This is hero pose. And if you notice it's a little too funky, maybe you have to modify where you're sitting at on that blanket to find your perfect place. I think actually maybe I do like my toes on the blanket. <laughs> Amazing, right? That's what this is all about. So from here, we're going to go into cow face. So shift your hips down, and you're going to keep your knees bent. And again, if this doesn't work for you, that's fine. Definitely keep your blankets and towels handy. So what we're taking is, now that we're on one side with both knees bent, you're taking one leg and you're crisscrossing it over. And if this is as far as you can get, that's fine. Or if all you can do is straighten your legs and cross one over, you're allowed to do that. Like there's nothing wrong. It's finding your own hip twist here. But for full cow's face, you take it. So you've got one bent underneath, one bent over, and then that one that's bent over, you lift the ankle. And then you go into like a really funky, modified, almost cross-legged pose. So this is what it looks like from the side. Leg is going down. Knees are stacked, hips are cross, and again, you've got the option here, if that doesn't work, you can put your knees on towels, you can do lotus pose, which is just 
in the legs crossed or legs crossed their feet above. But for cow's face, you cross them over and find that padding. So for me, this is really great with the blanket underneath because my ankles, again, are super bony. <laughs> so I need to have padding under my ankles to do a full cow's face. Now from here, you can grab your ankles, shine your chest forward. I'll rotate here. This is fun to rotate like this. And then again, once you're here, option to fold if you'd like. Wherever you are, find what works for you. I'm feeling this really in the back of my hips and my glutes. Breathing here. And wherever you are, we want to unwind and do the other side. So if you're in a cow's face, kind of just lean back and try and crisscross and lean over and find your way. If you're just doing a normal one with your legs up, just switch them over. And if you're doing cross-legged or lotus, put the other leg on top. So for me in cow's face, I'm going this way, crossing over, and then pulling that ankle in, straightening up my posture. I like to grab my ankles here, shine your chest forward, shoulder blades down, and again, option to fold here. Notice how I'm adjusting as I find my weight on the blanket. Mm, and I'm feeling that stretch on the other side. So that for me is right. What's right for you? Take your time here to find that stretch that works for you. This feels really good. I want to stay in this position too. But we'll find your way back up. Uncross yourself here. We're going to go back into hero. And this is another one we're going to do as an ankle stretch. So we're coming up here. There are two options. The first is keep your ankles together and you just kind of sit back on your heels. And then you lean back a little bit. So you're holding yourself up, but you're just pressing into those ankles. Or if you want to do the toe pressure one, you tuck your toes under and then sit back on your ankles and your toes are actually bent here. See how they're bent and they're tucked under. Now this, if you do it on a hardwood floor, is going to be a lot more toe pressure. So that's why the blanket's good here. So you have an option for either or just stay in hero. Again, shoulders back. Gaze neutral. Breathing. We're going to hold this for 30 seconds. And again, if it becomes uncomfortable, feel free to shift. No pain. One more deep breath. And release. Come back up. Let those feet go. Maybe kick your ankles. Nice work, guys. So now we're going to do a, a modification of that. So from your sitting hero, you can maybe you need another blanket or towel so we're going to try and do like a, a modified headstand or if you have a headstand feel free to put that in here so i'm taking from my standing hero or camel planting my hands around the other blanket and then i'm going to put my head down and so you're actually putting weight on the skull of your head the skull of your head the crown of your skull <laughs> It's Halloween, guys. Spoopy skull of your head. Okay. And then, uh, so from here, you have the option of closing your eyes and humming. And that'll do a vibration through your skull. Or you can do your headstand or either or. And I actually feel like I want to put my forearms down here. So I'm going to do that. And you'll notify where you put the weight changes the feeling in your skull. If it doesn't feel good for you, don't do it. Mm -hmm. It does sound kind of spooky too. 
<laughs> All right. Find your way back up. If you're doing your headstands, gently come back down to the earth. Find your way right, right side up. And then we're going to go onto our belly here. So we're going to go back into baby cobra if you hadn't done it earlier. For me, what works best is to have the blanket under my chest. So we're going to lay flat on our tummy. And then keep the blanket underneath your shoulders and chest. So from the rib cage over. Hands come to your sides with the el elbows towards your rib cage, hands under your shoulders. And again, maybe you have to scooch. Or maybe you like it under your hips too. Find that position that works. The backs of your feet are pressing against the ground. And you inhale and use your chest to lift slightly. Don't use your back. Use your chest. And maybe you lift your arms and then exhale down. We're going to do three. Inhale, lift. Exhale, down. Inhale, lift. And we're going to hold it here for three, two, one, and down. Good. From here, again, option to go through a flow or find your way back up. And we're going to go into our next belly here. So again, if you're doing your flow, this is going to be your last flow. If you're with me and being lazy, <laughs> it's not lazy, it's doing what feels good. I am going to be going into frog. So for me, I need a really, really wide blanket or multiple blankets or both. So if you haven't heard of frog, it's really huge, 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 huge hip opening. And it does not work for some people. If this does not work for your body right now, you can do as much of it as you want, including you can actually have a pillow and lay on it to raise your chest up. So there's multiple ways to get into it. I'm going to start from all fours. Might be good for me to do it in an angle for you guys. So here I am on my blanket. And you are going to take one leg and push it back. Keep that toe down. And then I'm holding myself up with my hands and I'm going to scooch the other leg out. So my leg is at a 90 degree angle. Oh, that looks worse. <laughs> my, my leg is at a 90 degree angle. My other leg is back. And then you kind of just lower your hips down. Oh yeah, that looks better. And then you walk your hands down. Yeah, like that. So this can be very, very painful on my knees. And I generally like to have that underneath. So if I didn't have this blanket here, I'd be putting this towel underneath my knee. But I also need it under my hips because it hurts my hips too. So when you find what works for you, again, you ideally in a true frog, you've got a 90 degree on your leg going out and then a 90 degree with the lower leg going out. Your other leg is straight back. And then you lower your chest down. And again, this is where I'm going to put a towel by my head, rest my head on the towel. And your hands can go wherever it's comfortable. It can be a T, it can be in front, or you can actually rest your head on your hands as well. But the towel or blanket works too. Find what works for your half frog. Or you can just do some more cobras, crocodile, locust. Lots of laying animal options. Even with the blanket under me, I feel it in my knee. Again, no pain. This isn't painful, but I notice it, which is why I have the padding. All right, two more breaths here. And then find your way back up. Maybe you straighten your legs, go through a little bit of a seal. Ooh, let's try the other side. Why not, huh? And again, I'm just turning so you guys can see me. But for you, you just switch legs. So you're straightening back one leg. I need my other blanket. <laughs> straightening back one leg. Eking out the other one so it's 90 degrees. That looks about right. And then lowering down. There we go. Again, find what works for you in half frog, other side. Three. 
three more breaths. Okay, and just for the fun of it, so I'm straightening my leg, coming back up. There is a full frog. I cannot do this. If it's in your practice, you can. I'll kind of show you what it is. You can imagine, right? So instead of doing one and one, you literally are keeping your legs wide on both sides. <laughs> See that? But my hips are floating, so I would need to have a towel or two. Notice how I'm putting them in front of me and rolling them so that I get that extra height. Let's try it now. Let's just see, because these are aids, right? They aid you in poses that your body ugh, can't do without it. There's nothing wrong with that. Almost. <laughs> I think I need to rotate a little bit. I need more space. There we go. Oh, this is a massive, massive, massive hip opener. So something like that. I can feel it in my knees, feel it in my hips. But that's a full frog. And if you can do it, that's great for your body. And if you can't, it's fine too. Okay. Ooh, I feel like we need to relax these hips now that we just worked them out, huh? So we're going to go into a really fun one called Bound Angle. So for this, take your blanket or your towel. <sighs> so we're sitting their legs forward and you're going to take it and you're going to kind of roll up your blanket so that you're wrapping your ankles with it by going over, behind, and through. See, over, behind, and then both sides come through. So you're actually wrapping up your ankles together. Then I'm going to scooch my bum up, lay back. And then you just let your legs drop open naturally. And the binding keeps your feet together. And now, of course, I threw my towels to the side here. You take those if you need to, and you can use them under your knees to hold your knees up. So now we're doing an aided hip opener to allow that stretch to just relax down. So I've got a blanket holding my ankles together and a towel under each knee. And if you'd like, you can even have a towel or a blanket or a pillow under your head. Hands can be on your belly or above your head like ghoul posts or a tee. We're starting to slow down now. So we'll be here for a minute. Feel how those hips feel. Oof, that was very juicy, huh? That's what the Australians say, juicy stretches and, and yoga. And if this doesn't work for you, you're welcome to unbind and just stretch your feet out in front of you. Do what your body wants here. And as we start to slow down, if your thoughts wander, bring them back to your breath. We have another 15 minutes or so of yoga practice left. And then you can think about those small things that are floating through your head. But for now, just let them float by. Five more breaths here. All right, now untangle yourself <laughs> and kick your props to the side. We'll use these again in a couple minutes. But for now, first off, if you need to do a, like a windshield wiper and just rock your knees side to side, that is perfect. And do what you need for those final stretches of your hips. And then we're going to draw those knees in. And really give yourself a hug here. Woo, hard work. Oh, and I'm actually wiggling my ankles here. If you'd like from here, you can give yourself an even bigger hug. And then I'm actually going to do side twists here. So I'm going to take one leg, extend it down. 
use the other leg, pulling the knee in, and then I'm going to guide the knee across my chest. Now again here, great idea, if you need this towel underneath your knee, it'll help your stretch, because all you want to do is keep your shoulder blades down and twist that knee over, and your knee may or may not touch the ground. Arms can be in a T here, and you can look to the opposite side. On the inhale, lengthen. And on the exhale, twist. And then bring it up. Hug your knee in one more time. Switch sides, kicking out that foot and drawing in the other knee. Pull it in nice and tight. And then on the exhale, fold it over. Again, using that blanket or towel if you need to twist on the other side. Looking to the other side if you'd like. So your knee is one way and your nose is the other. Or you can just have a neutral gaze looking up. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, twist. And then drawing it back in, untwisting. Pull both of your knees in, give them a hug. Nice work, guys. Now we're going to be doing legs up the wall as a second to last pose. So for this, I'm taking my blanket and I'm folding it back into, for me, it's four folds. So one more so that it's about that inch of leverage. When you go up the wall, again, you kind of want a blank area of wall. This is going to support your hips. Actually, I'm going to do, mm, no, I like this. Change my mind here. And again, if it's too, if it doesn't work like this, or maybe you have to do it skinny wise, skinny wise. <laughs> Find it. And you're going to put it on the wall. So your hips, when you're sitting towards the wall, you're going to rotate your legs in. Actually, I want my hips on the blanket. So I'm rotating in and kind of finding my way upside down. But now my hips are being held up a little bit extra. And then literally you put your legs on the wall. So my hips are being boosted. Can you see that? By the blanket. And your hands could do whatever they need to. And your legs could do whatever they need to. So you can leave them straight up. You can plant them and keep your knees at a 90 degree angle. You can do that frog again or the butterfly here. Find what works for you. We're going to be here for another minute. And if it doesn't work with the blanket under you, you can remove it. Maybe you want it under your head. Find what works for you here. Breathing. Notice how your hips feel after those stretches. It's been a big hip session today. And no spoilers. Well, actually spoilers. The next My Hero Academia one I do in December will be all about legs. So if you haven't seen it yet, it's on Facebook. We're doing Deku Legs Shoot Style Yoga. It'll be really fun. And this is going to feel even better <laughs> after that one. Okay, a few more breaths here. And you are welcome to stay in this pose for Savasana. And if you're with me, we're going to come back down, find your way onto the floor. Now there's about 1,800 different options. Okay, maybe just six for Savasana. The Savasana corpse pose when you're laying down. The first is literally you lay down and put the blanket on top of you. It's cooling down and it allows you to stay warm. So you can do the whole body cover. 
or if you're laying down and just look at me for now because I'm going to show you a whole bunch of options that you can play with. So you're laying down, you can put it over your legs and it presses on your legs. If you have a weighted blanket, this is double bonus. I actually got one at the beginning of the COVID just in case it was comfy and it was very nice. So then you could also put it on your belly as additional weight. So, so far we've got cover your entire body, your legs, or your belly. You can put it under your head as a pillow. You can put one under your shoulders. But if you do that, you're probably going to want one under your head. It's like Goldilocks Savasana today, you guys. And that's why I'm giving you a little extra time to play around with what you want for your Savasana. So now we've got head and shoulders. Oh, yeah. I'll move this back just a little. Move that a little. Then, third one, right? You can make a roll. I've never folded a towel so many times. <laughs> you make a roll and you stick it under your knees. So now I've got knees, shoulders, head. The final one is you can put one under your ankles. I'm just going to pretend I have a fourth towel here. Ankles, knees, shoulders, head. Or you can put multiple ones <laughs> for your ankles. And just keep your feet up like five legs on the wall. Savasana has so many options, guys. This is where it's at. So think about which one you want to do. We've got about eight minutes that we're going to do Savasana. So I would welcome you to try something now and stick with it. But if you ever need to relax, maybe try another one. So for me, I'm going to do shoulders and head and knees. Find your way into your cozy final resting pose. making any other adjustments you need so that your resting savasana brings you calm. Close your eyes. Come back to your breath. Begin to let go of any extra tension, maybe adjusting your heels and ankles, shoulders, hips. Sink fully into this rest and I suggest maybe placing your palms down for grounding to notice all the places your body touches the ground and allow these aids to literally aid you as you continue to rest and I will call you out in a few minutes to wrap up yoga for today
begin to bring small movements into your body. Gently wiggling fingers and toes, inviting a nice deep breath in. Rolling your wrists and ankles. And as you're ready, take a big stretch, just like you're waking up. Mm. Stretching out the arms, fingers, toes. And slowly find your way to one side in the fetal position. And stay there for a few breaths. Shinsu Hitoshi told Deku in My Hero Academia, maybe I failed this time, but I'm not giving up. I'll show them. I've got it what it takes to make the hero course, and I'll become even greater. He never gave up on himself. Don't ever give up on yourself. Be yourself and never stop growing. Find your way back up into a comfortable seated position. Moving aside your props is necessary, and if you'd like, you can sit back on your blanket one more time. As you find that easy seat, keep those shoulders back, and you can have your eyes closed, or maybe a gentle gaze forward. Breathe here. On an inhale, raise your hands up. Exhale, draw them down to heart center and come back to your personal intention that you began the class with today. What is it that you need to remember going forward? Is it the same intention? Or do you have something else for the coming weekend? Take a moment to set that intention now. And we'll seal it again with one big inhale. And exhale. And one more time. Inhale. Let it all go. And draw your hands to your forehead. Taking your thumbs and knuckles to your forehead, the center of your wisdom and intuition. And the light and love and teacher in me honors and thanks the light, love, and teacher in all of you. Thank you for coming to Designs for Zen today. And I wish you peace. Namaste. Thank you all for practicing with me today. I had a great time and I hope you did. I see some of you really love frog, which is a fantastic sign. We'll be doing all kinds of fun poses in the future, starting next week with another session using a new prop. Check my Facebook page to see which is next. We're going to be going through a whole bunch, including straps, blocks, balls. Oh, and don't forget, I'm definitely doing one on Halloween. So if you have nothing going on noon Halloween, be here, have costumes. I want to see your photos too. With that, I have had a fantastic time, and I thank you again for joining me for Rippling Designs for Zen. Take care, guys.